Hi, it's Heather with Bonnier Quilt Company. You might have noticed that we don't use uh, interfacing, stabilizer, anything like that. And sometimes that gets to be a little bit problematic for people, especially when they're sewing a t-shirt to another t-shirt when they're doing their t-shirt quilts. But we have a miracle maker and it is called our walking foot. So I am going to show you how I sew two shirts together using this fantastic, he needs a name. I don't know, he's just fantastic. So um, I'm gonna show that to you in just a sec. Hold on while I put my walking foot on, cause we're gonna go, we are going places. So you've got your t-shirts, you need to sew them together. And um, if you've never sewn anything before, you've got to do right sides together. <laughs> so, uh, hot tip, don't sew anything on upside down. Done it many times, it's a pain. Uh, but anyway, I go ahead and when I am sewing, there's two ways you can approach this. You can use a scrap piece of fabric to feed in, um, I think I'm going to do it here to feed, and this is an enormous scrap piece of fabric, but I'm still gonna do it. And what you do is you start stitching on that scrap piece of fabric. And my walking foot does not have a quarter inch on it. So this walking foot, I've got a brother machine and I just line up my, um, my edge of the fabric right there. And I just start sewing. I'm at about a two and a half on my um, stitch length. And so what ha often happens when you're sewing t-shirt quilts is everything gets jammed down into the plate. And if you've ever tried to take a t-shirt out of there and keep it from being stretched, you will know that that is nearly impossible to do. So I just feed that puppy through like that. Or the other technique that you can do is you can start stitching down here so you can kind of pull the shirts through a little bit. And once they get going, like everything else, they start going pretty quickly. So this way you can pull this scrap piece of fabric to get your, your fabric through. And as I stitch, oh my goodness, I already went off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, you just kind of line everything up like you would anything else. Stop when you need to. I love my needle down. Just leave that needle down. Um, if you've got that option where when you stop, it's already down, it takes some time to get used to, but once you do it, you'll never go back. And then we're just chain piece these puppies together. Again, make sure you don't stitch anything upside down. You can rip out. Ripping out on t-shirts um, is not anything like ripping out on cotton. Just double check that things are the right, the right way. For the love of all that's holy, uh, save yourself some time. Um, if you need to rip out, my recommendation is to look at your seam, take your seam ripper, um, just go along the seam itself, and every four stitches, five stitches, six stitches, just rip that one stitch and then your your shirts will pull apart and you'll have minimal stretching out of that it usually preser preserves the shape of the shirt very nicely um, if it doesn't then you have you need to rip more stitches as you're going oh, getting off a little bit again you know like don't don't worry if you're getting off a little bit. Nothing in the world is perfect. Nothing. Step up. And you'll see there's a little bit of stretchiness there, um, a little bit of puckering. Normally, if it's like this, it's not really that big of a deal. That's going to come out as you're working with the, the um, quilt and with the fabrics and everything. But. It looks pretty good. And we open this up, this one up. And it looks pretty good as well. So that's how I stitch things together without stabilizing 
anything. I just took that step right on out because I didn't really feel like it added enough value um, to the quilt itself. Um, and yeah, that's it. Come on over, see us, bonairquiltco.com. Sign up for the newsletter. Check us out on Facebook. We're there too. And we'll see you around.